It's been several months since Al Heyman's premier boxing champion series kicked off with the Thurman Guerrero card in Las Vegas. So far, the fans have had mixed reviews about the fights. A lot of the boxing media and rival promoters have been heavily critical, however, of Al Heyman's business practices, and all that's led to a lot more drama outside the ring for PBC than inside the ring. Either way you look at it, whether you love it or hate it, boxing fans everywhere are talking PBC. Al Heyman doesn't really do any interviews with the media. He, he's just very, very quiet about his business. There's very rarely any press releases. So the only thing we'd hear about Al Heyman here and there were little rumors, right? Little leaks of information. And for years, there's been rumors and speculation about some of his business practices bordering, uh, kind of teetering the line of, of the Muhammad Ali Act and the Sherman Act. Now there's been lawsuits coming out and some of these rumors are starting to become and feel a lot more legitimate. Top Rank just announced a $100 million lawsuit and that's already on top of Golden Boy Promotions $300 million lawsuit. Basically what these two lawsuits allege is that Heyman is trying to monopolize boxing and that goes against the Sherman Act and some other acts that I could talk about but I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of history and litigation stuff. Basically, they're accusing Heyman of trying to be a, a 21st century Rockefeller. You know, and you look at some of those guys back in the day with big steel, big oil, the railroads, some of the business practices of the Carnegies and Rockefellers was just straight up nasty, right? It was unethical. It even led to violence. Now, it hasn't gone that far with Heyman, but Golden Boy Top Rank are accusing him of some unethical business practices, mainly here in Southern California, squatting on venues, holding venues, holding dates so that rival promoters like Golden Boy top rank can't put on big fights here. A recent example of this would be the Matisse Provodnikov fight, which everybody knew should have been here at StubHub Center because Provodnikov was in a fight of the year in 2013 here at StubHub. Matisse was in the 2014 fight of the year here at StubHub. So, Al Heyman held the StubHub Center and held a certain date that Golden Boy and Top Rank wanted to put that fight on. When they changed the date of the proposed Matisse Provodnikov fight, well then Heyman put on the Fonfara Chavez card on that same date. So they ended up having to move that fight to upstate New York where it was a much smaller venue, did a much less a smaller gate because they couldn't hold the same amount of fans where well, that would have obviously been a sellout here at StubHub easily did about 8,000 seats, right? So these lawsuits guys, they're not just rival promoters hating on Heyman. I don't think anything is going to come of it as far as financial payouts or anything like that because you can't really prove intent, but they give legitimacy to some of the rumors we've been hearing for years. And on top of that, you got the Association of Boxing Commissions, which is an unbiased entity in terms of promoters. They work with everybody. They just love money. They recently asked the Attorney General here in the USA to get involved and start taking a look at Al Heyman. Also, the California State Athletic Commission has gone on record publicly talking about Al Heyman holding venues and basically saying they're not going to let him do it anymore. They're not going to let him get away with those practices. Even Kathy Duva of Main Events is pissed off at Al Heyman right now because she's putting on a card with Sergey Kovalev against a no-name opponent, it's a mandatory, in Las Vegas later this month. Kovalev's been an East Coast fighter, so she's trying to basically sell an East Coast fighter against a no-name opponent here in Vegas, and literally three miles down the strip, Al Heyman's putting on a PBC card in Vegas. Same day same city. Now we've seen this in boxing before, rival cards from rival promoters on the same date. We've even seen it in the same city, right? But here's what Duva's really pissed off about, and this is something that all the promoters have been stressing. Heyman papers venues, meaning he gives away free tickets, thousands of free tickets through services like One Iota here in Los Angeles and others in different markets at these PBC cards. So if you're Kathy Duva and you're trying to sell Sergey Kovalev in Vegas 
and you're trying to get that casual fan to maybe check out Kovalev because they've seen him against Hopkins or something. And that casual fan thinking, you know what? I've heard of this Crusher guy. I want to go check him out. But there's a fight three miles down the street and that's free. I think I'll go to the free fight and watch the replay of Kovalev later on HBO. That's what Duva is really worried about. And several other promoters have expressed concern about Heyman papering venues because when you do that, Fans in those markets start to expect freebies with every boxing event. Guys, it's business. You have to charge some monetary fee for your business or people won't value it. It's one thing to paper your venue if you're trying to build a brand, which the PBC is obviously doing, but to put on a card in the same night, the same city, literally three miles down the road, papering your venue when that other promoter is trying to sell tickets, that's kind of nasty. You gotta understand, Al Heyman's public profile was this big before PBC. Now it's huge, right? It's expanded so much because it's such a big endeavor. His fighters were just on Showtime. Now they're on CBS, NBC, Spike, ESPN, many other networks. For him to really build this brand, he needs the boxing media and other promoters on his side. If you're constantly pissing people off, even people at the commissions, even when you got the sanctioning bodies coming together and saying, whoa, 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 we need to take a look at this guy. That's hard to build up a huge brand like the PBC when you've got that much working against you. So. There's a lot of damage control right now. And like I said before, there's a lot more drama outside the ring with the PBC than inside. Let's briefly talk ratings. I don't wanna to go too much into this. You guys can Google the ratings numbers. It's all out there. But right now, the biggest PBC card so far was on NBC and that was the premiere, the one I mentioned before, Thurman Guerrero. That did over 4 million viewers, right? Now, the other two NBC cards have steadily decreased, but still done respectable numbers. Garcia Peterson did 3.3 million, and the Porter Browner fight last month, I think, did just under 3 million. Those are the three highest rated PBC shows so far. Not bad, but when you consider that NBC is in over 300 million homes in America, and then you look at HBO's three highest viewed non-pay-per-view fights so far this year. Alvarez Kirkland did 2.1 million views. Klitschko Jennings and Kodo Gill did about 1.6 million and they're only in 35 million homes. When you do that math, it makes you start to scratch your head, okay? Because HBO has about one ninth, one tenth, the potential viewers, the, the potential households that could watch the fight. And their top three fights are basically at 50% of what Al Heyman's PBC top three fights are. It's about branding. If you build it, they will come, right? HBO has had some really, really great fights and they have really exciting fighters with dedicated fan bases. PBC needs to start building that up. When you look at the other top promoters right now, like let's take top rank. They have Crawford, Bradley, Lomachenko, Berdejo, Walters. Golden Boy as Canelo, Jojo Diaz, David Lemieux, uh, Lucas Matisse, a bunch of prospects between those two, right? Rock Nation has a couple of marquee fighters. Main events have a couple of marquee fighters. All these guys, in theory, can all fight each other. Then on the other side, you got Al Heyman and his PBC, and it's almost like he's trying to make his own boxing league. And you've got some good quality fighters like a Sean Porter, a Danny Garcia, but the two big potential superstars I see are Deontay Wilder and Keith Thurman. Those are the two guys that have great personalities, the right demographic, they, they look the part, they're perfect for the mainstream sports media here in America. They could be those two big stars, but who the hell are they going to fight that the American public gives a damn about? All the people I mentioned before, Golden Boy, Top Rank, Rock Nation, Main Events. Heyman has legitimate beef with all these guys. He flat out refuses to work with some of them. There's litigation between them now. So how the hell do you make these big fights? 
So these big PBC names, and there's only a few of them, let's be real here, of the 200 fighters Al Heyman has, there's only a few of them with that big crossover superstar potential. Who the hell are they gonna fight to build that up? Do you think Floyd Mayweather is gonna fight Keith Thurman in September? That would be the only way I, I see Heyman's PBC really building into something, right? If Mayweather fought Thurman in September on like CBS or something, that'd be huge. And even if Thurman lost that fight, his brand would just, it'd be much, much bigger. But that ain't gonna happen. We all know that ain't gonna happen. So what the, where does Al Heyman go from here? And speaking of Wilder and Thurman and their crossover appeal, why the hell aren't these guys on TV? You're the PBC. You've got time by deals with NBC and CBS and ESPN and Spike TV and all these other places. Why haven't we seen Deontay Wilder on some of these late shows? He's got a great personality. He'd be great on some of these late shows. And you've already got the connections at the network. Pick up the phone and say, look, I'm booking Keith Thurman on such and such show. Hey, uh, ESPN people, uh, First Take, I hate that damn show by the way, right? But it's a highly viewed show, ESPN First Take. Don't ask me why, those guys don't know shit about boxing, but I'd be calling them up and saying, hey, Stephen A. Smith, I got a new guy that you can dick ride. His name's Deontay Wilder. He's bringing his friend Keith Thurman. They're both gonna talk about their upcoming fights. That's what should be happening. They're not being promoted. Let's take a guy like Adonis Stevenson, who everybody and their mother wants to see fight Sergey Kovalev. Now, if your main events, your HBO, your Kovalev, you basically had a handshake agreement with Stevenson back when he was fighting on HBO. There is an understanding that these guys, Kovalev and Stevenson, they were fighting as co-features, right? They were fighting a similar level opponents. They were being promoted on like a crash course to fight each other. Your main events, your HBO, you've invested money and time into this guy, feeling that down the line, you're gonna get your boy Kovalev in the ring against him. And then at the last second, Heyman pulls him away, right? And Stevenson jumps ship. So if your main events, you want Kovalev to fight Stevenson, but that would require you leaving HBO, who you've worked with for decades, almost exclusively, who gave your boy a shot when no one else would, Kovalev. It required leaving them, jumping ship, and you're, you've already been screwed over by this guy Stevenson and Heyman once. You're gonna put faith in these guys again that they're gonna do the right thing all of a sudden? No. And it's not just Stevenson, Kovalev, Andre Ward would be willing to fight Adonis Stevenson. Who the hell wouldn't like to see that fight? But again, he's with Rock Nation Sports, and Al Heyman has this beef that goes back years with them, with the people that run Rock, Rock Nation. So there's no way that fight can happen. So, so what do you do? If your main events and, and HBO and all these other people, you just move forward. And now Kovalev and main events and Rock Nation and Ward, they're talking about doing business. And Adana Stevenson, a guy that I think is probably a little overrated, but he had a fan base up there in Montreal. What has he done since winning his title? He barely beat Andres Fanfara and he hasn't said shit about a rematch. And then he fought Saki Obika in front of a half-empty stadium, probably as small as Crowley's fought in front of in years, and a, sh a show that did a horrible rating for the PBC. That's just an example of some of the things going on here, and I don't see how long-term, over the next two or three years, this thing is supposed to build up and last. As far as my feelings, regarding the, the fights themselves, the actual events, the series as a whole so far, it's a mixed bag. The quality of the fights, the matchups, when you consider that it's free TV and that almost every week for the last few months we've had free boxing on TV, I think considering all that, the quality of the fights has actually been pretty good, okay? The aesthetics, I don't like the ring walks, this Hans Zimmer music and the fighter walking out. Look, bring back the damn ring walks and bring back the damn ring girls. We need those things. They're synonymous with boxing. 
Watch any boxing movie you've ever seen, any boxing TV show, any boxing related commercial or something, right? You always see a ring walk. You see a ring card girl. It's synonymous with this sport. It's part of boxing lore. It goes back literally centuries. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. Bring that stuff back. Other than that, it's the location of some of these fights. And I've talked about this in other videos. Look, Porter and Broner, I get that, that Porter fights out of Las Vegas now, but he's from Ohio, and let's face it, Broner's a much bigger name and a more established star. That fight should have been in Cincinnati. I think Al Ham is starting to figure this out because the upcoming Thurman Colazzo fight, that's in Florida. That's, uh, I think it's in Tampa which is right down the street basically from Clearwater, Florida, where Keith Thurman is from. So you gotta figure that will do a big crowd, right? You gotta figure, even if it's not a big crowd in terms of numbers, it'll be a passionate crowd with real fans. Not that corporate stuffy feel, right? And I've been to a few of these PBC cards and that's basically kind of the feel you get. I've been to a ton of boxing events, guys, amateur and pro, all levels, small club, shows and huge, huge pay-per-view fights. And you could tell when you're in an arena with real fans. In these PBC fights, you could tell they were papered because you could just you could just look at some of these dudes and they're all preppy and you know, you could tell they don't watch boxing. Also, because of all the reasons I mentioned before with all the other top promoters basically having beef with Heyman, he's working with these lower level promoters to kind of handle the nuts and bolts because technically, Heyman is an advisor even though we, we know he's basically a promoter. Legally, he works with some of these other promoters to, to work out, like cross the T's and dot the I's on these you know, events. And these are promoters that generally do Friday night fights level shows. They do local club shows. And I think it's not a coincidence that a lot of these big PBC cards, even though they're supposed to be big championship fights, they kind of have the feel of a Friday Night Fights slash club show card. That's kind of what translates to the camera because you're working with promoters that pretty much only do those type of events. Now, if you're working with the Golden Boys and the top ranks that put on these big events, it have that big feel. So that's another part of this. You know, if you're trying to build this to the casual sports fan, because that's who Al Heyman needs to keep the PBC going. But you have this feel of a corporate type of crowd and a club promotion type of card pretending like it's this big championship card. The appeal, the appeal isn't there, the mass appeal. I say all this and I say, I want the PBC to succeed. I'm a boxing fan. Free boxing on TV is awesome. I want this thing to work, but there's a lot of problems, a lot of wrinkles that gotta be ironed out. And I just hope that somebody at the PBC starts listening to diehard boxing press and diehard boxing fans about our complaints because if we ain't buying it, how the hell is the casual fan gonna buy it?